Hello, Froggy here. There are many useful tricking techniques to learn while searching the world of destiny. Today I'd like to share a few of my favorites involving load zones. My hope is that mastery of these mechanics will help more guardians explore the wonderful world that Bungie has built for us just beyond the map's edge. Veteran players should remember the armory chest glitch in the Leviathan. As you can see, you can grab the chest from below. But sometimes, people can't seem to find it no matter how hard they try. The reason for this is load zones. As I head down this hallway, I enter another region of the map. The area around the planters is somewhat unique in that while there, you can still see guardians in the other region. So, as you can see, I can still see our paranoid tree frog friend over here. But when I turn and try to get the chest, I can't find it. It's no longer there. It's in the other region. But I simply pop back over here, load the previous region, and I'm good to go. That is if I jump in the right place. There we go. But how does this help us explore? Here's an example. Let's say I've spotted an area that looks promising for an out of bounds. So I head over to explore it. But what's this? I can't seem to jump at all. I've hit the zone ceiling. No matter what I do, I can't get over this wall. Well, actually this little corner to it lets me, but it's not all that interesting back here. Not terribly much to see at all. Here we don't see Paranoid Frog. He's off in another region. Let's head over to the Hollows and join him. Regions generally overlap with asymmetric load zones between them. These in-between spaces are generally the same in both maps, but outside the map they can differ in pretty important ways. Hey Paranoid. So, now let's go back and try that jump again. As you can see, the ceiling is higher here, and bam, we're out of the map. I'd recommend checking this area out on your own, as you can get around a lot of the underside of Nessus here. Now let's take a look at Widow's Walk. Often, when exploring outside of the map, it can be very easy to get disoriented and lose your way. Luckily, Mr. Blue Sky is hidden right around the load zone for Trostland, so if we head towards him, we should be able to load back into the main section of the map. Hey there, Mr. Blue. And we've made it. It's often useful to have fire team members inside of the map mark areas of interest you may want to explore. It's also worth noting that sometimes you'll need to hit a lone zone at a very particular spot to get where you want to go to. Now let's head back to the Leviathan to check out a few raid glitches in Eater of Worlds and Spire of Stars. Have you ever wanted to go back to the boss room of Eater of Worlds after you beat the raid? Well. If you die as soon as you enter the chest room, you can. Sometimes you might have to uh, run off a couple of times, but that's okay because you embrace death. this works because this is not the same chest room you see in Leviathan. It's actually a separate copy, and it's inside the same map region. Reflect on this. At the start of Spire of Stars, if you jump down to the right, there's a little nook that you can get out of the map in. And you can continue this way all the way to Power Conduit. Let me speed that up a bit. Sadly, I don't remember which video I originally saw this on. But I do remember that the person narrating was very clear that he wanted to die as soon as possible after you hit the power conduit load zone. And, as you'll see in a moment, 
when you respawn, you respawn inside of the map. Now, with these two glitches together, we can do some pretty interesting things. Both of those glitches rely on spawning mechanics in Destiny 2. Specifically, something that I like to call the Pity Spawner. The game does not like to spawn you in dangerous places. So, for example, if I were to get off of my sparrow here and die in the radiolarian fluid, the game would spawn me back a little bit. You can see my former corpse up there. But this area isn't safe. In fact, I'm dying almost immediately. So, that won't do. That won't do at all. So the game tries again. This time we're back up on the waterfall, and once again we're losing health rapidly and are not long for this world. This is the mechanic that keeps you from getting repeatedly spawn killed in missions and the like. And at last, we're right back where we started. Let's say you're exploring a pretty area out of bounds. Distracted by the scenery, you fall off a cliff. What are you to do? Doesn't look like there's an easy way to climb up. But maybe, just maybe, if we jump off the map fast enough, we won't have any safe spawn point to go back to and we'll be back up top. So we cross our fingers and respawn, but wait! This isn't back up top at all. How will we ever get there? Well, it turns out with our friend, the Fighting Lion, we can kill ourselves without moving at all, and by doing that, the game believes that we don't have a safe spawn point and will push us one back on our queue. Similarly, let's say we've found a load zone that gets us to an area that we would really like to explore inside of the map in. Say, in a strike when we've got past a barrier we weren't able to get past. Once again, we can use our trusty fighting lion to off ourselves and move back our spawn point queue. Once we roll off the end, we'll respawn inside of the map. And that's it for now. Perhaps later I'll cover some other topics. But until then, enjoy loading into new and exciting places beyond the bounds of destiny.